Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having an awesome day. We have a really fun treat for you today. We're gonna to be doing a tutorial on making a fluid simulation, kind of a fake fluid sim in Cinema 4D. But the good news is there are no plugins that we're gonna use, so no real flow, no X particles. This is just with Cinema 4D, so it's a really fun technique. And again, this is a collaboration between myself and Alessandro Boncio over at renderking.it, so make sure to go check them out. All right, let's dive right in. So here's our ice cream bar, and we're gonna add a stream of ice cream falling and hitting the top of this bar and kind of trickling down it. So we're gonna start by making our stream of ice cream, and we're gonna do that with a spline. So let's add a rectangle spline. We'll Go ahead and rotate it and we're going to want this to be pretty thin and small so we'll make the width like five the height like 50 so we have this kind of thin little stream and we're going to put this in a cloner so let's go to MoGraph, add it into a cloner we're going to clone this on i believe the uh, z position yep and let's do seven in the count four five six seven all right, so our splines are here now, and we're actually gonna use a loft nerves. But before we do that, we wanna add a little bit of a twist to these so that the uh, stream of ice cream is kinda of like folding and falling in on itself. So let's go to the rotation of our clones, and we'll play around with that. So I think it's the bank that we need. Yep, something like that. And let's hit C on our cloner so that we have all of our individual splines. And we're gonna add a loft nerves, grab all those rectangles, and drop them into the loft nerve. All right, so here's what we got right now. This will be our stream of ice cream looking real good. And if we want to play around with uh, some of the twists, we can go ahead to these individual ones and add a little bit more twist. All right, so one thing I do want to mention is let's turn off the caps. We do not want caps because that will make it act a little bit weird. So add no caps. And then let's play with the subdivision a little bit. We have a lot on the edges, which we are not going to need. So let's go to the object and let's change that to 5. And maybe, actually I think I'll leave it at 10 just so that things are pretty fast here. We'll increase the resolution in a little bit, but I wanna walk you through soft body dynamics now, and that's how we're gonna get that kind of fluid look. So let's right click on our loft, and let's add a simulation uh, soft body tag. And then we're gonna want it to collide onto this uh, ice cream bar, so we'll right click on that one, add simulation collider body. And let's hit play and just see what happens. So things are looking uh, like we're in the right direction, but you can see that it's sort of falling off to the side. So we want it to actually stick right onto this ice cream bar and just kind of like slowly ooze down it, right? So we're gonna go to our soft body dynamics tag and we're gonna play with some of the settings. So the first thing we're gonna play around with is under the forces. So under follow position, follow rotation, and then the damping, we're gonna play around with these quite a bit so that the, uh, the strip doesn't just kind of like fall off to the side. So if we increase the follow position and the follow rotation, so it's gonna get a little bit better, but we have a little bit too much energy going down, so we need to kind of dampen some of that, uh, that energy, especially that angular damping, which we're gonna set up to 100%. So let's hit play and see what that looks like. So now you can see that instead of completely falling over to the side, it's sort of staying in that one spot and slowly kind of just sitting there. So that's looking pretty good. We can always go to our loft and play around with some of these twists if we want it to act a little bit differently. So something like that, it's gonna start folding in on itself nicely. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. All right, let's play around with some of the other settings in the soft body dynamics. So the thing we're gonna play around with is trying to get this to be less rigid. So we're gonna play with the settings that have to do with uh, kind of the structure of these springs so that it's very loose, it kind of folds, and it looks more like a fluid. So right now it has a 100% structure. We're gonna want that to be down to one so that it has very little structure. And then I think it's gonna start kind of collapsing in on itself and folding a little bit more. You can see that's working. Something like that. And let's go ahead and play with the flexion as well. And this is just another setting for kind of how tight these springs are trying to maintain their angle. So we're gonna to wanna to increase the flexion quite a bit. I think I had it something really high, like 5,000. Actually, I think it might've even been more, maybe 10,000. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so it's having even more of that kind of crumpling and folding in on itself look. 
And then one other thing we're gonna play around with is the volume. So under shape conservation, the volume is kind of another way of saying just the structure of it. And we're gonna want that also to be down to one. So it has very little volume. And then as it hits uh, the ice cream, it's gonna slowly kind of ooze and trickle down it. So that's looking pretty good, although it is a little bit slow. If you ever think you wanna add a little bit more gravity so it speeds it up, you can hit uh, Control D go to the dynamics tab and play around with the gravity. So if we uh, kick this up to 1500, let's see what that looks like. So then it's just gonna fall a little bit faster and kind of ooze down. So that's gonna kind of, uh, actually that seems like it works pretty well. Maybe we'll change that to like 14, something like that. So I'm gonna just play around a little bit more with some of these rectangles. And then also uh, one thing that we probably should do at this point is increase the subdivision. because that's gonna change the kind of the way the simulation works. So let's change that to 15 and just kind of see what this looks like. Things are gonna start slowing down, but uh, we're gonna bake this out in a second, so it should be fine. So one thing that we wanna do at this point, now that we have our simulation, when we start adding volumes, it's gonna be a little bit slow, so you're definitely gonna to want to have this baked. So you're gonna click on your soft body tag, go to the cache tag and just click bake object. And that's gonna bake down your simulation, so you're gonna be able to scrub through it and it's gonna be a lot faster to work with. So we'll go ahead and let that bake. So here's our simulation. I'm actually gonna go ahead and play around with this a little bit more. I'm not super happy with it. I kinda of want it to fold in on itself a little bit more. So I'm gonna mess around with these rectangles. All right, I'm back and I figured out a couple things that made this look a little bit better. So you can see this animation is looking better. It's definitely crumpling in on itself more. And the way that I did that was um, under the collision, the bounce and the friction, I played with those. So if we reset these to default, right click and reset to default, uh, we have a lot of bounce and we have very little friction. So I turned the bounce to zero, and then I cranked the friction way up to 250. And I did that also on the ice cream bar on that dynamics tag. And that basically just kept it kind of stuck onto the ice cream cube instead of sliding down it. So just a little bit more friction and then we got that nice kind of curling up on itself effect. So this is looking really good. So let's go ahead and make this into ice cream now. Uh, before we do that though, let's add some nuts to this ice cream bar just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I have a really cool way to do that. Let's make a cube, move it off to the side. Hit Shift C to bring up your dialog, and we're going to type in the Voronoi fracture. And I have a whole tutorial on this as well, which I'll link down below, so make sure to watch that. But we'll add a Voronoi fracture and drag our cube into it. Under the Voronoi fracture, if we go to the Sources tab and click on the point generator, we have a point amount. And if we hit that up to 100, we're going to have a lot more little cubes. Now what you can do is hit C on the Voronoi Fracture and it's going to make a bunch of different pieces. This is a really cool way to make random geometry really quickly. So now all you have to do is hold down Shift and click a bunch of these different little cubes, maybe like five or six of them. And let's go down to the Voronoi Fracture, click and drag those selections out of it and then click on the Voronoi Fracture and delete it. And now what you're left with is a bunch of kind of random little pieces which we can use to be the nuts. So that's a great way to make some just random geometry very quickly. All right, so we're gonna throw these into a cloner, drag and drop all those little pieces into the cloner. And then in the cloner settings, we're gonna change the mode to object. And under the object, we're gonna drag our ice cream bar. So we'll drag and drop that into there. And just like that, we have little nuts all over our ice cream bar and we can increase the count here and add quite a few more. Looks like they're too big, but we can highlight all of our cubes, hit T to scale, and then click and drag to scale them down. There you go, now we have a ice cream and nut bar. All right, so let's make this look like ice cream and make the fluid simulation complete. And we're gonna do that with the new volume system in Cinema 4D, which came out with R20. And I have a whole video showing you step-by-step -step how to do this, which I will also link down below, but we'll walk through it really quick. So we're gonna start with a volume builder. And what we're gonna do is drag our nuts, our uh, ice cream, and our ice cream bar all into that volume builder. And everything gets really pixelated. That's because these are all voxels now. And we're going to go to our volume builder and change the voxel size down so that we can start to increase the resolution. And we'll put it to one, which is gonna slow things down quite a bit, but that's okay. All right, so here's what we have so far. And um, right now there's nothing to render. So we're gonna to go to our volume and our volume measure, drag our volume builder into the measure. And now we actually have geometry. So let's go to our grout shading. And you'll notice that our ice cream is gone. So what happened to it? 
Well, the problem is it's a little bit too thin. So the volume builder just kind of erased it out. So we're gonna have to figure that out. So the way we're gonna do that is go into our volume builder and we have a couple options down here. The uh, order we're gonna put these in is really important. The first thing we're gonna add is a reshape layer. If we added the smooth layer first, it's gonna get smoother, but we're gonna lose all of that ice cream, which is not what we want. So the, the uh, order of these layers is very important. We're gonna add a reshape layer first, and the reshape layer is basically going to blow up the geometry and kinda of like puff it out even further. And that's going to reintroduce it so it's not getting cut out. I'll just show you, we'll add a reshape layer, and all of a sudden we can see everything again. And you can play with the reshape layer on the uh, the offset. So basically if we had the offset at zero, that's what we had before. And as we increase the off offset, it's kind of blowing it up and making it fatter and fatter and fatter, which is great because we actually want it to be very fat, probably like seven, because then we start getting that ice cream kind of blobbing look. And this is starting to look really good. These uh, nuts in here are still a little bit too big. We'll click on all those and scale them down a little bit. So scale those down to something like that. And now let's work on the smoothing. So this is looking pretty good. We've got a really nice simulation, starting to look a little bit more like fluid and ice cream. You can see that it's uh, kind of blobbing together here nicely, but we do have some problems on the creases here. And we're going to address that by adding a smooth layer. So let's add that on top of the reshape layer. And uh, you can see that it smoothed itself out pretty good. So we're starting to get a pretty decent result here. It's a little bit too smooth probably. We could probably take the strength of that down a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. Now, if you render this out, you still might have a little bit of flicker. This actually doesn't look too bad, but it never hurts to add a little bit more smoothing. So what I like to do is take this volume mesher, hit Alt-G, and that's going to group it all into a null. And we're going to add a deformer. And this is gonna be the smoothing deformer, which we can drag and drop inside that null on top of the volume mesher. So now if we toggle that on and off, you can see that it's definitely smoothing out some of those creases. And if we want it even smoother, we can actually just double this up and add another smoothing layer. It'll give it another round of smoothing and you're really gonna get some nice soft edges. So just hit render now and you're gonna have a really nice animation of this ice cream blobbing down. And also just think about any other thicker fluids that you could do. You could do uh, maybe honey or toothpaste, something like that. And if you don't have real flow or a fluid simulator, uh, this is just a really nice way to do it with only Cinema 4D um, native tools. So I hope that you found that useful. Huge thanks to Alessandro for teaming up with me. We're having a lot of fun making these tutorials together. We got plenty more coming up, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.